Greetings AP Calc BC students, Mr. Record here for our final video that covers topic 9.6. We're still talking about integration, but this is a problem that's going to involve what we call one of those initial condition problems. In other words, you're going to be given a value for which the function is equivalent to, and then you're supposed to find that value of C. Got it? <laughs> Hopefully when we look at the uh, actual problem here in example three, it'll make a little bit more sense. So let's take a look. So here is our example number three. You're given the fact that um, you're supposed to find uh, R of T, which is the antiderivative or the integral of the sine of 2Ti plus 1 over T squared plus 1J. Now you're also given the fact that R of 0, the vector R evaluated at 0, is 1 half I plus 1j. So this ought to be familiar to you if you remember some work that you did in AB that you were able to find the c value for a definite integral if you were given a point that lies on the curve. This is very similar except we're given a specific vector in this particular case at a certain point or a certain time, if you will. So how do we solve these? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is actually take the antiderivative or the integration. So that's what r of t is going to be. So <clears throat> if we take the antiderivative of the sine of 2t, right, we're doing this separately, we know that we get the cosine of 2t. That will be negative, correct? This is going to be a negative answer because if you integrate and you get a cosine or a trig word that starts with the letter C, you know that your answer is negative. But you also have to consider the fact that u in this problem is equal to 2t. It's a u substitution problem on top of that. The derivative of 2t is 2. And remember, with integration, you have to flip that upside down to offset. And then it probably looks best in that particular order we still have a constant, right? We still put our plus C1 there because this is not a definite integral. It's an indefinite integral. And you also, of course, have your I. Next up, you go to the next piece. Now, this one probably should be a little easier to integrate as long as we remember the formula, and that is that the integration of 1 over t squared plus 1 is the arctan or inverse tan, however you want to write it, of t, and then plus our constant c2. Don't forget your vector component there of j. Now, if this, let's say, were a problem that just said, you know, that initial condition wasn't there, this, I suppose, would be your final answer. So how do we work with that initial condition? Well, if we know that r of 0 is equivalent to 1 half i plus j, well, that means also that r of 0 would be equivalent to what we get in this vector if we let the t be zeros there. So we would have negative 1 half times the cosine of 2 times 0, which I'm going to go ahead and simplify to be 0 there for us, plus your constant c1, of course. And then over here, we have the same thing. We have arctan, or inverse tan, of 0, plus our c2, times our j. And all of this, as I said before, was given to us as 1 half i plus j. OK, well, what comes next, you might ask? Well, we actually finished simplifying this. Knowing the cosine of 0 is 1, we get negative 1 half plus c1 times i. And then hopefully over here, you're somewhat comfortable with the fact that the inverse tangent of 0 is 0. Tangent has one of that relationships that the tangent of 0 is 0, the inverse tangent of 0 is 0 also. So really, we just have c2 times j. And all of that is equivalent to 1 half i plus 1j as we said before. Maybe I could put the 1 in front of the j, kind of help emphasize it. Now, let your common sense take over. If these two vectors, the two that I'm underlining here in orange and gray, are equivalent to each other, then that forces their components to be equivalent. So that means the i component, or x component, is equal to 
the x component on the other side. Solve this for c1, and you get 1 when you add a half to both sides. Same thing works for c2. It's equal to 1, and, well, boom, c2 is solved for, right? And now your final answer. Let's find that very specific vector r now by just rewriting our first line of work where we had negative half times the cosine of 2t, but instead of putting plus c1, we can plop down our actual value. It's still nice to put that in parentheses with your i, and then we have the same thing over here. The inverse tangent of t is going to be added to 1 in this case, and then our j. And as always, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. You're more than welcome to use your vector bracket notation. Just be very careful to include all the parts. Make sure you throw that comma in there. That's very important because otherwise we wouldn't know, you know where your x part stops and the y part begins. And that is it. That takes care of how to find a vector value function with an initial value or initial condition. And it also takes care of all of the different kinds of integration problems that you will see with vector value functions. That only leaves one more topic left that deals with vectors, topic 9.6. And that focus is all going to be about particle motion and movement. So a lot of different things are going to go on with the problems that we solve with that particular unit, uh, that particular topic. We might do some derivative work and we might do some integration work as well. We'll see you at those videos. Thanks for joining.